solamente eh, 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 determinados eventos como la enfermedad, no necesariamente un accidente violento, o de, determinados eventos muy particulares permiten volver a ver que en esa frase o en ese gesto uh, existe una enorme cantidad de violencia. And sometimes when something specific happens, maybe like a sickness or, or not necessarily a violent accident, but something like that puts it back in perspective and you realize the kind of violence that you had forgotten to see there before. Y me parece a mí que, eh, que hay un montón de cuestiones eh, que definen a la gente bien y a la gente buena. Digamos, yo fácilmente me podría poner en el grupo de los buenos. Eh, y sin embargo, hay muchas cosas a las que me he acostumbrado que me convertirían fácilmente en un monstruo. There are specific things that uh, say whether you're good or bad, so she can easily relate as she could put to herself, place herself in the good people group. But there are some things that if you actually think about, you know, could turn her easily into like a monster. Y para mí esos, esas cuestiones violentísimas que se vuelven invisibles son, por ejemplo, eh, eh, uno tiene una cantidad de espacio en su casa que perfectamente podría albergar por lo menos a dos o tres de los que duermen en la calle en la propia manzana de uno. Y sin embargo, ese, esa situación nunca, se, nunca sucede. Nunca nos parece que tenemos espacio de más. So one of the things uh, that um, has a lot of violence, for instance, to put a specific example, is like when in somebody's house, in each of our houses, we probably have room for at least two homeless people within our own block, and yet we never think that we do have extra room. Y eso no es, eh, no estoy haciendo demagogia, sino es sencillamente que ya hay una percepción de nuestro espacio y de lo que necesitamos tan fuerte que eh, 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 se impone sobre el sufrimiento de los demás. Yeah, she's not trying to be politically correct by saying that, but obviously we do have a sense of our own space that is just so strong that it, that is the one thing, and we just forget about the rest or, or the others. Y entonces, en la en las películas a mí me gusta esos lugares de violencia que son a los que nos hemos acostumbrado. So those are the, the spaces where she finds the violence in her movies and wants to show the ones that we are actually used to. Eh, este, tener una persona sirve, eh, que sirve la comida y mientras uno charla y come y hay una persona que está yendo y viniendo con la comida son situaciones de violencia a las que en Latinoamérica fácilmente, digamos, sobre todo las clases sociales altas, se acostumbran facilísimamente. For instance, when you have a maid or somebody laying your table and, you know, you have a group of people eating and enjoying and there's somebody else standing there coming and going, that could easily be, specifically in Latin America, a very violent situation in, in, in a way. Esos son para mí los, eh, esos son los lugares donde todos somos una por bien, los buenos, digo. And those are, are the, the moments and the specific situations where we all we, good people are, you know, turning into monsters. Yes, here. Oh, thank you. I, I, I wanted to ask her if, she, if she's seen uh, Death of a Cyclist or the West German film Wolfsburg, and if those two films influenced her making this film. Uh, it's a good question of that two, two films, Death of a Cyclist and uh, the film Wolfsburg by Christian Petzl. La muerte de un ciclista la vi eh, porque eh, una productora que leyó el guión me, me, me pidió que la me dijo que la viera porque tenía relación. She didn't see the second one, but she did see the first one. It was actually because of the suggestion of a producer who wrote uh, who read her script and suggested she should watch the movie because you know it had something that appealed to it. Pero por ejemplo esa película me parece que eh, que el conflicto ahí eh, es claramente distinto, porque el, pro el problema no es una cuestión eh, de clases sociales, sino eh, de hipocresía dentro de una misma clase. However, she feels that conflict is different, because it's not a conflict between two different social classes, 
but it has to be with the hypocrisy within one same class. En torno al matrimonio y la lealtad y no parece ni pero no me preocupó cuando la vi. Uh, it has to do with, with like marriage and, and loyalty and that. So she was not actually concerned about when she watched it. Thank you. Uh, yes, in the back there. Um, just a comment first. Um, I love this moment at the end where um, it's kind of a moment of historical revisionism where, you know, it's blurred and you're not sure if these men have hidden the accident from her. And they're celebrating. And just a comment. Okay. Uh, I love the ending where there's a kind of moment of historical revisionism where you're not sure if that's what's going on, uh, whether the men and all these people have hidden the accident, whether she's actually killed someone. Uh, just a comment first that I love, um, I was thinking of Claire Denis, uh, the last scene of Bot Chavai, where that, there's that crazy dance by, um, by that, uh, that French actor, and after a whole movie on historical re revisionism. Anyway, my question is very simple. Um, what is the reaction in Argentina when you're presenting a mirror to them. Como en todas partes, una gente le gusta y otra no. Más o menos. Me parece a mí que lo que pasó en Argentina también que nosotros tuvimos la dictadura y los desaparecidos y la película tiene una conexión con eso y me parece que Quizás la, el periodismo, el, 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 la crítica subrayó mucho esa conexión. Well, first of all, it happened what happens any place. You know, some people liked it, some people didn't. And um, basically, we in Argentina, we had the dictatorships uh, and the missing people, the desaparecidos. So the, the movie talks about that in, in its own way. And a lot of critics really underlay that and focus on that. Hay una cosa que, que sucedió mucho en, en el cine argentino que eh, estábamos acostumbrados al, a lo que nosotros definimos por ahí como costumbrismo en el cine y, y, y eh, en un cierto punto el público argentino tiene un placer por el costumbrismo que es algo que la, la televisión ha desarrollado mucho y a veces estas películas eh, frustran al espectador que desea ver eso. Yeah, we have something called costumbrismo, it has to do with like everyday life and, and very um, um, specific and, and situations that, specifically TV in Argentina, you know, girls in this and people that like, the audience that like those kind of things, when they see these films, they're kind of disappointed because they, they're hoping to find that and they don't. What's that word, sir? Costumbrismo. Over here. Thanks so much for uh, sharing these wonderful films with us. I wanted to ask you um, a little bit about the bodies that appear on screen here. I was thinking of the Dardenne Brothers films quite a lot. As I was watching this film, the sense of being very close to a body and sharing in some ways a viewpoint with that body, but not knowing how to look at what that body is looking at. There are also there are very interesting moments um, at the in the opening scenes of the film, which are very disorienting for the viewer because we don't quite know where to situate ourselves, we don't know who is related to whom, we don't know where bodies are coming from, and we also don't know how effects are related to actions, or what's a cause and what's an effect. And one moment where that seemed to take really interesting form is in the handprint that's left on the window of the car. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit, uh, a little bit about that handprint and the handprints that are actually on the, in the next few frames, right, which are slanted. So is that delivered? Sí, están muy mal hechas porque las hice yo misma. She, did, she made those herself, so, so they're, they're not really that well done. A pesar que el, el utilero, que era buenísimo, me dijo, mejor las hago yo, yo dije, no, no, yo las quiero hacer. Yeah, the art guy suggested he, he should do it, but she said, no, I want to do it myself. Y, este, y lo que vos notaste es un problema de continuidad. And basically, yeah, what you, what you were pointing out is a um, problem with continuity. Pero, de cualquier manera, eh, lo que para mí era importante que sucediese después del accidente es que eh, una, una huella una huella de, de humana este, 
lo que primero significa es la ausencia del humano, que estaba ahí, que tocó eso.